A woman named Anna Fox suffers from agoraphobia and lives in a luxurious mansion. It was Monday. Anna as usual calls with her daughter Olivia, who lives with the father. To avoid leaving the house, Anna orders food for delivery. Looking out the window, she noticed that new neighbors had moved into the house across the street. Later, Anna met with her psychotherapist, Dr. Carl Landy. Anna, who always watches her neighbors, told him that a married couple, Alastair and Jane Russells, with their son Ethan, had moved into the house across the street. Carl believes that the patient's curiosity is a positive sign and an important step towards recovery. Despite her condition, Anna drinks a lot. She herself worked as a psychologist for 15 years, but doesn't see an issue with her harmful habit. In phone conversations, the husband asks Anna to stop, but she lacks the strength to cope. She continues to observe the neighbors, as it gives her a sense of connection to the outside world. Suddenly the doorbell rings. It's a neighboring boy who brings a gift from his mother to Anna. Anna is confused, but still lets Ethan into the house. She hasn't had guests in a long time. Ethan is thrilled with Anna's cat. The boy also said that he misses Boston, where their family used to live. When Ethan noticed family photographs, Anna mentioned that her husband and their 8-year-old daughter Olivia don't live here. Ethan, who is almost 16, kept asking questions. Anna revealed that she's a child psychologist, conveniently omitting her own illness. Ethan noticed that from the window of the house Anna could see what was happening in the apartment across the street. At that moment, Ethan almost cried and was on the verge of hysterics. Anna immediately realized that something was wrong. Ethan clearly has something to hide about his family. Throughout the night, Anna watches movies and drinks wine. At one point, she breaks into hysterical laughter. Tuesday morning was like any other. The doorbell rings again. It's David Winter, who rents the basement from Anna and lives there. He knows about her illness and always offers help. During the night, Anna woke up due to strange sounds and went to check what was happening. As it was Halloween, many children had gathered near Anna's house. Not receiving sweets, they were throwing raw eggs at her door. This threw Anna into a panic. When she finally decided to open the door, the last thing she saw was the face of a certain woman. A few minutes later, Anna regained consciousness. It turned out that the woman had helped Anna, who had fainted. Anna immediately understood that it was Ethan's mother, Jane Russell. Anna confessed that she has agoraphobia and panic attacks, which is why she hasn't left her house for many years. Jane was completely cavalier and didn't hesitate to ask personal questions. Anna told her that she's separated from her husband and daughter, but they talk on the phone every day. Therapy isn't helping Anna much in dealing with her illness, but that doesn't stop her from drinking a lot. Jane showed Anna a pendant with a photo of her little son. Currently, Jane's whole life revolves around her family, the husband is very jealous and controlling. That's why she doesn't mention that her favorite earrings are a gift from an admirer from long ago. According to Jane, Ethan is very sensitive, so conflicts between her and the husband negatively affect him. Jane has a hobby, drawing. She drew a small picture for Anna as a keepsake. After the guest left, Anna gazed at the drawing for a long time. Soon the doorbell rang again. This time it was Alistair Russell, Jane's husband. He asked Anna if anyone from his family had been to her today. Anna firmly answered no. Wednesday morning arrived. Anna felt like there was someone in her house, so she dialed 911. But it was just David, who couldn't reach her earlier. David wanted to borrow tools to help the neighbor. He writes songs but sometimes works as a carpenter. Anna gave him a toolbox. He decided to check the roof of Anna's house, which needs repairs. At that moment, Anna asked David about their neighbor. But David didn't really know much about Alistair Russell. At night, a scream was heard. Anna looked out the window and realized something horrible was happening in the house across the street. Anna immediately called Ethan, who could barely speak due to sobbing. Ethan kept repeating that everything was fine. Suddenly Anna saw Jane rushing out of the house. At that moment, Ethan hung up. A few seconds later, Alistair called back. Anna explained that she heard a scream. Alistair pretended not to understand what she was talking about. Not knowing what to do, Anna tried to call David, but he didn't pick up. So she went down to his basement. However, David assured her that he hadn't heard anything. It was clear that David wasn't alone there. Taking a video camera, Anna started spying on the neighbors. At night, Ethan left his house and came to her. He was on the verge of hysteria and told her about his father's breakdowns, which were becoming more frequent. Anna embraced the crying boy, who asked why she was so kind to him. Anna said she will always protect him and gave him her phone number. Soon Ethan returned home. On Thursday, Anna told the husband about what happened, but he advised her not to get involved in others' affairs. 
Anna looked out the window, watching as David drove somewhere. She's getting used to new medications, and it's worsening her condition. In the evening as usual, Anna drank wine and watched TV. Due to the harmful habit, her physical condition continues to deteriorate, but Anna still refuses to recognize the problem. Looking out the window, she saw Jane. After that Anna fell asleep, having troubling dreams. She was teetering on the edge between reality and fantasies. Upon waking up and not finding her phone, Anna panicked. She searched for it everywhere, but to no avail. Looking out the window again, she saw Jane, who also couldn't sleep. When Anna momentarily got distracted to take her camera, she saw someone attacking Jane. In shock, Anna dropped the camera. She's convinced that Alistair did it, even though she couldn't see him in the window. Anna rushed to find her phone, growing more panicked. Finally, she found it under the bed and called the police, explaining the situation and asking officers to come urgently. The lights in the house across the street went out. Jane is still alive, but she's in great danger. Anna realized that the only way to save the neighbor is to leave her own house. Anna thought that an umbrella would give her a sense of security outside, but in the end she couldn't do it. When Anna woke up, detectives and Alistair Russell were already in her house. He claimed that Anna had never met his wife. According to the detectives, no one was harmed, Jane is perfectly fine. Anna was in complete shock when a certain woman introduced herself as Jane Russell, Alistair's wife. Anna insists that the woman before her is not Jane Russell. But even Ethan said that it's his mother and that Anna was unfamiliar with her. The Russell couple considered Anna insane and hurried to leave. Detective Little left her his card and said she could call anytime. Anna told the husband about what happened, but he of course didn't believe her story. He is sure that his wife is getting worse. Friday morning arrived. Anna was determined to figure out the situation and searched the internet for information about Jane Russell, but the searches led to nothing. So she tried to find out something about Alistair. It turned out that Alistair's former secretary in Boston was found in a parking lot. According to the police conclusion, the woman voluntarily passed away, but Anna understands that it's not that simple. In the evening, Anna went down to the basement, calling for David. She thought she heard something. Seeing letters on the floor, Anna picked them up and learned that David was having legal problems. Suddenly David appeared, who was indignant that Anna was rifling through his things. When she asked if he knew Jane Russell, he replied that he had never seen her. Anna continues to watch the neighbors through the window. Now there is another woman living in the Russell house, pretending to be Jane. Anna took many pictures. Apparently, there was again a conflict between family members at dinner. At some point, Anna received a voice message on her landline phone. Jane asked her to stop spying on them, or she would call the police. Jane hid and then closed the window. Saturday morning arrived. Anna couldn't find her cat anywhere. When she heard meowing from the basement, she went downstairs. The cat was under David's bed. Anna wondered how it got there. On David's table, Anna saw Jane's earrings, which were a gift from her longtime admirer. This threw Anna into shock. She intends to find out what really happened to Jane. When Ethan left his house, Anna opened the window and called out to him. The boy came over, saying again that his mother had never been in this house. Anna is convinced that he's covering for his father and asks him to tell the truth. At that moment Alistair appeared, who was furious. He started yelling at Jane, calling her crazy. All Alistair wants is for Jane to stop interacting with his son and disturbing their family. When the neighbor left, Jane hurried to lock the door. She couldn't sleep all night, and on Saturday morning, she watched again as Ethan left the house. Anna has solid evidence that Jane was here. It's a drawing she made. Anna looked at the photos of false Jane Russell. Suddenly she received an email from an anonymous account. At that moment, Anna got distracted by her cat. The photo was loading slowly. Someone had taken a picture of Anna while she was sleeping. Seeing this, she dropped her medicines. The police arrived. Anna has no idea who could have done this, as only David has a key. Suddenly the enraged Russell couple burst into the house. It turns out Jane called Boston, to the office where Alistair used to work. She also keeps spying on them and bothering their son. The couple is convinced this woman is not in her right mind. To prove her point, Anna showed irrefutable evidence, the drawing Jane made. However, everyone assumed Anna drew it herself. David, who has a solid alibi, intervened in the conversation. Yesterday he was in Connecticut with his girlfriend. Then Anna announced that there's a Jane Russell earring in David's room. However according to David, that earring belongs to one of his girlfriends who was here last week. The detectives checked and confirmed David's words by talking to his girlfriends. Anna continues to insist that David has legal troubles, and Alistair is keeping a dark secret about his secretary's demise. 
Everyone presents looks at Anna as if she's crazy. Her words seem like nonsense. Anna said that Ethan is in danger. If her husband were here, he would take her side. At that moment, Detective Norelli told Anna that her family has been perished for a long time. Anna refuses to believe it, remembering driving in the car with her daughter and husband. Anna was behind the wheel. At some point, Edward said he was tired of pretending to be a happy family. He no longer wants to pretend. Anna however wants to preserve the marriage for the sake of their daughter, but the husband can't forgive her for infidelity. Suddenly the phone rang. When Anna got distracted, they got into an accident. This is Anna's last memory of that evening before Christmas. In the present, she had the realization that all this time she hadn't been talking on the phone with either Edward or Olivia. Her brain had concocted an alternative reality to cope with the extreme shock. Anna was the sole survivor of that accident. This is how she lost the dearest people to her. Detective Little told Anna that he had spoken to her attending physician. Anna's mental state is attributed to grief. She likely genuinely believed that the woman in her imagination was Jane Russell, but that's not the case. Earlier, the detectives had checked Anna's words but found nothing suspicious. The woman who is currently with them in the room is indeed the real Jane Russell, Ethan's mother. On the following Monday, Anna met with her treating physician. She finally acknowledged all her problems and supposedly is ready to embark on the path of recovery. Now David is planning to move out from her, but that's even better for Anna. Later, she recorded a farewell video message, explaining that no one is to blame for her decision to voluntarily leave life. More than anything, Anna wants to turn back time and correct her mistakes, but that's impossible. She is the only one to blame for what happened to her family. At night as Anna was reviewing photos of Olivia, in the last photo she noticed something suspicious. It was the reflection of that woman who introduced herself as Jane Russell, in the wine glass. Suddenly there were suspicious sounds. It turned out to be David coming for his things. Anna asked him to come upstairs and showed him the photo. This serves as proof that Anna didn't invent this story. However, she didn't anticipate that David would reveal a horrifying truth to her. It turns out he knows this woman. Her name is Katie, and Ethan is her biological son. She was the one who was in David's room and left the earring there. After that, David broke up with her because she was utterly unbearable. According to David, Katie left Alistair when she was eight months pregnant and got into trouble. Alistair found her and took their son. After that, Katie went to prison. The Russell family had been hiding from this woman for years. Alistair even paid her to not pursue them. Eventually they had to leave Boston, but even here Katie found them. Anna is sure that Katie is no longer alive, as she saw it with her own eyes. However, David refused to go to the police with her. Chasing after him, Anna accidentally dropped her laptop, shattering the screen. At that moment, a strange sound was heard in the house. In fear, Anna went to check what it was. It was Ethan, who had taken David's life and was now coming for Anna. He had done the same to Katie and the father's secretary in Boston. Anna can't believe it and is perplexed as to how Ethan got into her house. Ethan confessed that he stole the keys. He was the one who took a photo of Anna while she was asleep. Ethan was resentful of his mother and now seeks revenge against all women in the world. He learned all the information about Anna from the realtor who sold them the house. Of course Ethan doesn't intend to stop there and plans to continue taking lives. Seizing an opportunity, Anna escaped to the roof, where a struggle ensued between her and Ethan. Eventually, Anna pushed Ethan down. After some time, Anna woke up in the hospital. Detective Little informed her that Katie's body had been found and that they had arrested the Russell couple for helping Ethan cover up his crime. Anna's farewell video still remained on her phone. The detective suggested that Anna delete it before he takes her phone as evidence. Detective Little genuinely regrets not believing Anna from the start, just like everyone else. Nine months passed. Anna is preparing to leave this house for good. Now Anna doesn't drink and isn't afraid of the outside world. She misses her family very much, but she's ready to move on. Besides, Anna is not alone, but with her favorite cat.